This is Jonathan Arthur, a celebrated European chef who has made his home in Tuscany, where he has now lived for many decades. We're now in the tiny village of Montefalonico, and here is the world famous Innocenti Winery, where they've been making wine since about 1300. Here we go. I can say that I am truly honoured to introduce to you Vittorio Innocenti. Vittorio Innocenti, who early in his life was a professor of philosophy, has now taken over the family vineyard. They've been making a, a wine here as a family we know for seven generations. As a, as a winery, it's certainly been working since the 1300s. It's a very small production, about 35,000 bottles a year. But Vittorio wins um, prizes all over the world. The Gambolo Rosso, which is the wine spectator of Italy, gives Tuscan wines, about 20 Tuscan wines a year, top marks. He's had that more than once. His wine is absolutely exquisite uh, and made in the, old, in the traditional way. Now this would go extremely well with those cheeses. Siamo usati a Pienza con assaggiare i pecorini, questo è un pecorino. È perfetto. It was no accident that Italy and Italian food captured his heart. Although born and raised in England's southwest, he was exposed to the delights of Italy through family vacations, then later as a student worker during summer breaks. Upon graduating, he moved to Italy and enthusiastically immersed himself in the cultural and historical significance of traditional Italian cuisine. In Italy, you eat Italian. If you want to eat it somewhat differently, you go five miles down the road because they make it differently in every place. And Italy is, is, is very regional, very seasonal. We cook different things at different times of the year and in different places. And that's what's nice about slow food, is the idea of maintaining those traditions. I mean, the best slow food is my neighbour, who is 85 years old, and cooks a wonderful meal, just the same as her grandmother did. Um, and it's always been the same, and uh, it doesn't change. We don't have chefs over here, we have cooks. Okay, this is Franco. He has the La Grotta restaurant here in Orvieto. He makes the best piccioni in olives in the area. The Orvietani had this great idea. Rather than going out from the, the town that sits on the top of uh, a mesa to get the food, they'd send the pigeons out to get the food. And when the pigeons came back, they ate the pigeons. So we, um, he makes the best in the area. We're going to go in and try some. Finding the secret of Italian cuisine to be simplicity and the use of only the very best raw materials, Jonathan then set off with the fervor of the convert to discover the history and geography that gives birth to some of the best foods on the planet. It will come as no surprise to you that this is a cheese shop. Almost all the cheese here is sheep's cheese. It comes from this area, Pecorino. It's what Pienza, one of the things, as I said, that Pienza is famous for. And if we look at these cheeses, these are the youngest ones, the white ones. As they come down, so these are the red ones, these have been coated with tomato paste. They're somewhat older. Further down, we have the, 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 the more aged ones, the more mature ones. These have been aged in the ash from the fire. And first, um, the leaves, either from a bay leaf, or sometimes from the uh, walnut tree. Today, visitors from around the world, and even Italians themselves, have flocked to his side in order to discover the true art and philosophy of the traditional Italian kitchen. Through this series, the viewer will be introduced to many of the families who for generations have dedicated themselves with passion to maintaining the tradition and excellence of their exceptional produce. This is my friend Francesco. Uh, he's like a brother to me. We've been... Quanta che conosciamo? Saranno vent'anni. About twenty years we know one another. Quanta volta abbiamo mangiato insieme? Saranno... <laughs> yeah. We must have sat down at the same table 2,000 times. 
His family have been here for at least 250 years, making lovely wine, great olive oil, and he's going to show us how it's just cool. Okay, can I ask a question? Divino Quattro. So this is a 2004 Orvieto Classico. Trebbiano? Trebbiano, Malvasia, Grigetto, Rubeggio, Gertello. Those grapes. Just as good as it was last time. With Jonathan Arthur as our guide, we will enter into a world of age-old taste perfection that defies any suggestion of the mundane. Jonathan has appeared numerous times on television around the world and is now embarking upon a unique series of TV shows. These highlight the most fundamental essence of the joys that make Italian food the envy of the world. Those little stoppers on the top are called Salvo Michi. That means saving your friends, because if you don't have them, they pour out too much and they, you get cross with them because they've taken too much of their balsamic. Now let's taste this one. Again, it's creamier. It has a more syrupy taste to it. This is absolutely delicious. Um, and this really does go well on things like strawberries, ice cream, anything you can think of. You use a tiny, tiny amount. With Jonathan Arthur as our guide, we will enter into a world of age-old taste perfection that defies any suggestion of the mundane. Here is a particular form of cheese. It's called Pecorino di Fossa. Now, if you'd be making cheese and you didn't want it stolen by marauding mercenaries or during the Second World War, a good idea would be to bury it underground. That's why it's called di Fossa, because it's from a fossa which is a ditch in the ground. They make a hole in the ground and bury the cheese. However, this has a big effect on the cheese. Normally, cheese goes from being milk fats into cheese because there are microbes that live on the oxygen in the air and they make that transformation. If you bury it underground, no air, no oxygen, no microbes. So that what's, working, what's worked on these cheeses, rather than being aerobic bacteria, are anaerobic bacteria, and that gives it a specially nice, specially strong taste. Few North Americans have ever been exposed to such a compendium of secrets and delights that are revealed in this 13-part series. The breads and pastries, the immense varieties of meats, the cheeses and other dairy produce, the balsamic vinegars, the olives, the mushrooms and truffles, and not least of all, the pastas that are all paired with the incredible wines unique to any given region. This complete gastronomic series goes to air in North America in the spring season of 2011.